I got one of these double-edged safety razors in October of last year. It's kind of old school, but I really like it so far. That's better. You know, it's 5 p.m. in the afternoon right now. Like, I would say my sleep cycle is messed up, but it feels like my whole life cycle is messed up right now. <sighs> A lot of stuff has been happening, guys. Welcome to day 113 on the ship. So we've been docked here in Manila for about two or three weeks now, and so much stuff has been going on. It's been hard to capture it all in one video. Manila is pretty much the only port in Southeast Asia right now that's allowing international crew members to get off the ship and fly home. And because of that, literally almost every single cruise ship in the Asian market has been flocking to Manila over the past month to sign off their crew members. It's been a absolutely massive operation. We've had people sign off from the Philippines, from the United States, from the United Kingdom, from Canada, Russia, Ukraine, Hong Kong, Thailand, Cambodia, Montenegro, the list goes on and on and on. And that actually brings up a question that a lot of you guys have been asking. Why are you guys wearing these masks right now? Why do you have to social distance? You've been on this ship for four months with almost no contact from the outside world. Surely everybody realizes that the virus isn't on the ship. Well, guys, basically what it comes down to is these regulations weren't put in place by Royal Caribbean, but essentially, all of these regulations have been put in place by the governments that we're sending these crew members home to. And of course, it's a little bit of an inconvenience to have to put on a mask every time we wanna walk around inside the ship. But guys, my attitude regarding all this is if that's what it takes to get our people home, if those are the regulations that we have to follow, social distancing, wearing a mask, if that's what it takes to get my friends home that haven't seen their families in months and months and months, I think it's absolutely worth it. And so that is why we've got masks on, that's why we're social distancing. Those are the guidelines we have to follow in order to appease the powers that be that decide whether or not my friends get to go home. Do they have the right to ask us to do that? Of course they do. They're worried about the health of their citizens. And in the times that we live in right now, I don't think that any precaution isn't worth taking when it comes to the spread of this virus. Of course, it's a little inconvenient, but that's all it is, just a small inconvenience. You know, in order for some crew members to go home, their countries are actually requiring them to get fully tested for the virus before they're allowed to sign off. And in order to accomplish that, we've actually converted the Royal Theater into this impromptu testing center. It's really cool how they've accomplished it, but it's also kind of weird to see the room completely transformed into this foreign thing, especially when I worked in that room for more than seven months on lighting and shows and all sorts of stuff for entertainment on the ship. Oh no, it's starting to get dark outside. That's what I get for trying to film at five, six o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> also, my camera is dangerously low on battery right now. I really should have planned this whole shoot better. <laughs> First order of business, we're gonna go get another battery for the camera. It's giving me anxiety. <laughs> I wonder how many of you guys actually take the stairs on cruise ships. Most of the time I'm taking the elevator, but I'm in an active, healthy mood right now. <laughs> But I really wonder how much use these stairwells actually get compared to just taking the elevator up and down, especially on a ship this big with 16 decks. Also, if any of you were wondering which cabin we're in, it's deck seven, cabin six, eight, zero. <laughs> Hi. Are you filming me? Ugh. 
Where's battery number three? Oh, there it is. Number two goes on charge and number three's in the camera. So uh, I've been on this ship for like 113 days now. And I was gonna make a video on day 100, just talking about that milestone. But then, you know, the day came and went and I realized there's not much to talk about. Like the significance of that day didn't really hit me. I think at least for me personally and for Cass, we've kind of reached this point at which it doesn't really make a difference one way or the other how long we're here. It feels a lot more like I have control over my life again because I've made that decision and I'm choosing to stay here instead of having that situation forced on me by external circumstances. It feels so good to have that little bit of control restored to my life again and I'm so grateful to Royal Caribbean for giving us that option in the first place. You know, from a business perspective, it really doesn't make that much sense at all for Royal Caribbean to be doing this, to continue to pay for our food and housing and all of that. But to have that option to remain on board, to remain on the ship and just live here in a space that we're comfortable with and familiar with, it just means a lot. So thank you, Royal Caribbean. Also, guys, um, Important. I've decided not to talk about it in this video, but I'm really excited. I may or may not have some really cool news upcoming in the future about things. So stay tuned. I know that's super vague and I apologize. I've decided not to talk about it yet until I have more information, but assuming all things go well, we might have some really cool news for you guys in the future. Most of our friends on the ship have actually gone home at this point, so we're down to pretty much doing what I guess everyone else around the world is doing right now. Sitting in our room and playing video games and watching TV. What are you playing right now, Cass? I am building my island on Animal Crossing. Welcome to my island. So you get like a nice water fountain when you come in. It's like a center square kind of thing. When you come over here, you get my little carnival section. I sell toys, I sell clothing, suitcase. I have a vending machine here just in case I'm hungry. Oh, by the way, we get to pass by the orchard up the ramp. And ta da! This is the outdoor gym and playground se section. Do you like it? I like it. So yeah, we've been playing a lot of our Nintendo Switches, we've been playing a lot of the Oculus Quest, and that thing has been a total lifesaver. It, it's so great to have that little escape from reality, even if it's just to slice some blocks with lightsabers for a few hours. It is incredible, and it's a really good workout too. <laughs> I can never beat that part! What did you think of Star Wars, Cass? It's great. I liked it but I think I like Star Trek more. <laughs> I don't want to get caught in the war of the Star Wars and Star Trek, but I do like Star Trek more. So we've moved on to watching Star Trek. We've started on Voyager, and if you guys haven't seen Voyager, first of all, it's an incredible show. I highly recommend it. But also there's like a lot of similarities between what the crew goes through on Voyager and what's happening to us on the ship right now. And yeah, it's been super fun. Let's concentrate on proving Harry and Tom's innocence. How do we do that? We know the explosive was trilithium based. If we find the source of that trilithium, it may lead us to the real bombers. Now, guys, it's about midnight right now and the moon is out, so it's actually washing out quite a bit of the stars. But to finish off this video tonight, I wanted to share one of my crazy nighttime passions with you. So I'm about to set up my camera for about five hours to take a bunch of beautiful pictures of the sky here off the side of the ship. And hopefully that ends up being a gorgeous time lapse for you guys to finish off this video. Thank you guys as always for liking, subscribing, and sharing the video. I've got links for my social media down below in the description if you want to go follow me over there. And aside from that, I've got to switch this camera into picture mode. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.
So we're about two hours into the time lapse and I think I'm gonna cut it a little bit short tonight because there's a massive thunderstorm developing on our starboard side and I don't want the camera to get rained on. Here he is, still trucking along. All right, let's bring it inside. On the bright side, we should get some awesome time lapses of this lightning. Look at that, guys. That's gonna make for a good time lapse. <laughs> 